She's gonna be the lady on the front row oh. that you need to that you need to start. And I need for you to get her going. All right. Yeah. This is gonna be a totally different side of me. So, closing out tonight with this version of New Editions. Can you stand the rain? I want to thank God for just this opportunity to do what I do. And first, I must thank God. I must thank God. I must thank the Lord. Y'all already know. First off, I want to thank God because that's who I look up to. He's graced my life with opportunities that I know are not of my hand or any other human hand. Bobby, Mark, and Matt who couldn't be with us today. And most of all, God. Thank you very much. Uh, glory be to God. I, uh, I claim this victory in the name of the Lord. Most definitely we want to thank the Lord Almighty. Because without him we would not be here right now. My wife Keisha, my children my ancestors who, who, who continue to guide my steps, and God, God who believes us in, in us all, and uh, who's given me this moment. <laughs> of the exposition uh we just i just i mean i'm excited about my birthday i mean it's a big milestone that's a century yes sir ain't it yeah I mean, I mean i thank god for my age i thank god for 50 years i thank this wonderful church for all that they did for me we had a, just a crazy good time this weekend and my wife, all the work she did, and you know, y'all see the king in the back because I'm her king, so that, that's not that's not idolatry. I'm her king, so that's what that is. But anyway, <laughs> I, I just wanted to show you just a glimpse of some of the stuff that they made for me uh, to celebrate this birthday, and uh, I'm really excited about it. But uh, we need to get on with the show, so we get on with the show. So let's get rid of this stuff. So we're back. And uh, we're doing a special show today talking about faith. Um, all of us have been kind of faced uh, recently with people with some challenging issues concerning faith and belief and different things. And so we definitely wanted to cover that. And again, thank you for your comments and thank you for all of your support. Uh, the exposition is, is helping a lot of people. Uh, when I get the comments, people are really being blessed because we're dealing with some topics that you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there, but from a credible source that is using the word of God uh, without a motive, right. uh, you know, it, it, that, that's kind of the game changer. So uh, we'll continue to bring you these. Uh, thank you again for the support. Uh, so today, uh, this is episode seven of the exposition, uh, season two, and we're going to be dealing with faith. So come in with you. OK, J. Brian, we're going to have to speak up a little bit. You know, pastor is a little older. This last episode. Okay, so today we're talking she about. She had to get one in. Listen, she had to get one. In. Okay. Yeah, y'all, 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 y'all do the stuff that like that, that planet does, and I'm gonna let y'all have it. You just gotta speak up. Yeah, y'all, y'all good. Y'all sharp off the hip with that. I'm gonna let y'all have it. <laughs> we gotta talk about faith. So we're gonna clearly define faith. I heard someone the other day, and they were talking about how uh, they refer to their belief system as their faith. So let's clearly define faith for our for our viewers. Um, it, it's simple. I think the Bible is very clear on what faith is. Mm -hmm. um, Hebrews 11 and 1. Uh, we've been hearing all our lives. Right now, faith is uh, the subject of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen, uh, substance meaning uh, tangible, but the evidence of things not seen meaning like you believe it before you see it. And this is going to sound like one of those, mm -hmm. you know, things, but that is the true definition. That's of the true it. definition. Um, now faith. Not now just faith. Right. Now, now. faith. 
N O W. They used to say that. And now, I always wonder, faith. now faith. Yeah, because God, we can't see him, right? So we have to trust and believe first. And that's what that, that principle is, is I'm speaking to. Um, and then because by that faith we live for him, we begin to see things that we give him credit for in our lives. So yeah, he moves 11 and 1. Yeah. When uh, people refer to their belief system as their faith, they should mean mm -hmm. that they have hope and evidence of the unseen right. residing in their belief system. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. Uh, you know, even atheists, you know, let them get in enough trouble. They're going to they gonna be <laughs> believing in something unseen. Absolutely. Because if it's based uh, merely on on what we can see, then we're all miserable, according yeah. to the Bible. Uh, so we all have this belief in something which our belief is in Jesus Christ and the religion of Christianity. In order to even come to God, you must first have faith in who he says he is. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe first that he first. is. That's right. And that he is a reward of them that di diligently yeah. seek him. So how do you come to a God that you uh, uh, aren't believing in or you don't have full belief in? He says, you know, if you want to be a rewarder, if you want to be rewarded, rewarded by him, mm -hmm. you know, you have to uh, uh, believe he is who he says he is. Exactly. So why do we say we have faith out of our mouths, but then take no real action to support what we say? And I've seen examples of that where I've seen people say, well, I'm believing God for a house, but they don't ever save a dollar. <laughs> they just believe it's just going to pop up and that's my house. So talk about that. <laughs> well, uh, our faith will absolutely be null and void mm -hmm. if we do not act on it. Right. And the wait, Bible, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Now, act on it don't mean get the house. <laughs> Without the money. <laughs> Without the money. <laughs> there we go. Right, right. That, Take the action to get the money first. Okay. Yes. Okay. See, that's that now. That's the now faith. And be getting the money over a long period of time. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Not the new money that you don't, you yeah. haven't learned how to manage it. Yes. Right. So, but, but, you know, our faith is null and void if we do not act on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then faith requires action. So anyone can say it, claim it, but, you know, real faith produces works. Mm -hmm. James 2.20 says, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. So it's, it's two things that have to occur with the faith, right? The belief and then the action has to marry each other. And even when it comes to claiming a belief system, works to validate that claim are required. Right. <laughs> I mean, so you can't just sit up and say you believe and there's no proof of it. All right. It's funny how every other belief system is shown by extreme measures. Mm -hmm. But those that claim Christianity are the most passive and lax concerning their faith. Yes, they are. They get in an argument with a Hebrew Israelite. Next time you see them. They they, they weren't a they, they martin, right? Have Afro, have dread. I mean, they weren't a <laughs> they're between faiths, and, and, and they're carrying around <laughs> two stone tablets. Yeah. You know, I mean, because they, they, their faith hasn't prompted them to study their faith. It hadn't yeah. prompted them to learn more. It hadn't prompted them to do anything. And we know this is this is not it, because First John three and ten says, "In this, the children of God are manifest, yeah. and the children of the devil." So this is how we know the difference. Whoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, right. neither he that loveth not his brother. So there's a contingency. You mm -hmm. can't just go around saying it. If you're not doing righteousness, then you're not of God, according, according to the Bible. So your faith has to produce evidence. Right. And, you know, I know folks say, well, the evidence is speaking in tongues when you feel the Holy Ghost and all mm -hmm. this, in which that, that's a different show, but that's not evidence of right. having the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. uh, your righteousness would be more evident because the Bible says if he's in you, you're righteous. If you're not doing righteousness, mm -hmm. then he's not in you, right. according okay. to the scripture. But right. aren't we saved by grace and not by works? Well, yeah, we're saved by grace through faith Okay, is, is how the scripture uh, reads it. This means our faith has to be the catalyst for the grace. Right. Right. So yeah. uh, works can't save us, but works prove we are saved. Right. You know, it's like just the evidence of it. I mean, right. you know, that that once you're saved, you're going to want to do good works. You're going to want to do righteousness. A person that wants to keep being who they used to be, where they even changed. Right. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, for by grace, ye are saved through faith. And then the Bible also tells us that faith, like you just read, without works is dead. Is dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how does pride interfere with faith? Well, if, if, if our faith is in Jesus, mm -hmm. then how could we be lifted up in pride? Right. So those two, those two don't marry each other at all. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was the perfect example of being meek and resisting pride. 
And that same mind should operate in us as mm -hmm. his children, right? As his ambassadors in the earth. Uh, it should operate that way. James 4 and 6 says, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resists the proud, but give grace unto the humble. So, so I'm, I'm in the field of sales. And by God's grace, I've handled myself in a way where I feel like it's more um, in light of him. So I do well. People say, hey, man, how do you do so well? Or, hey, man, you're number one. Or, hey, man, you've gotten this accolade and this. Like, OK, cool. But if I keep the main thing, the main thing, which is I'm here to earn a check so I can take back home, take care of these people at the house. Right. Mm -hmm. Then I don't let all of that stuff because the pride sets in and it becomes more about how people praise me for the. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. So mm -hmm. that's where faith comes in. It. I go into that job like everybody else with the same opportunities as everybody else. Right. A little bit, a little bit of favor on my life, right? <laughs> but the idea is that you don't allow that that pride to interfere with the faith, knowing that God will bless the work of my hands. That's the faith, mm -hmm. right? And I go as far as to say that pride is the opposite of faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason I say that is because pride makes us manifest proof right. of who we are to please and impress people, but faith causes us to prove ourselves to God to please yeah. Him. Yeah. And that's why I always look at it, you know, look at it that way. And you know, growing up in church. I saw a whole lot of people that couldn't be helped because of their pride level. Wow. You know, and that's that's one thing I always want, you know, wanted to make sure wasn't a part of who I was or what I was doing. I didn't want to be so prideful that I couldn't be corrected, rebuked, admonished mm -hmm. or changed right. by the church. Right. People will sit in church forever the same way and never change because of pride. Dangerous, yeah. And, and, and you know, I teach people this at, at here at ABC, you know, because we have a very unique church here where people would just move here for the church. 90% right. mm -hmm. of our congregation may have, may have risen higher than that, moved here from out of state. Right. Yeah. So most of the people, you know, of the 500 plus members we have, most of them have relocated here and that's just a different thing. Yeah. You know, that's a that's a very different, different. A different thing, but one thing I tell them when you come here, don't come here and try to change your identity and be something that you're not, because then you've wasted a trip. Mm -hmm. right. You came here trying to be something in the eyes of people that yeah. you're not. So that's prideful. Mm -hmm. Change can't happen because you're hiding who you really are. So, you know, a lot of people use church for that. And that's why I say it's the opposite of faith, because Faith causes us to please God, and we're only concerned about God and what he thinks of us. But, you know, when it's pride, we're concerned about what other people are saying, which puts us in a position where we can't be helped and, you know, we can't, we can't be blessed. So right. in order to really have Christ and, and, and adhere to his way, we have to be humble right. because that's the way he was. James 4 Amen. 6, uh, the end of what you read says, he giveth grace unto the humble. So in talking about pride, then, is it even possible to desire to be lifted up and glorified by men in the church? I mean, should our faith even allow that? Our faith in God should absolutely humble us. Okay. Like one one million percent, our faith in God should humble us. So we shouldn't we shouldn't seek to be lifted up pridefully in Christianity because there's only one high priest. Right. So how do you expect to be lifted up high if we already got somebody that's sitting in that throne? <laughs> there's somebody already there. Yeah. You know what I mean? The high can't be in your title. It, it can't. If, if there's a high priest, then every, that's it. You have to be low. Right. 100% low. Uh, <laughs> and, and you know, it, you fall into that. And we're going to get into it more later in the show. I was telling Pastor earlier, I'm glad that we're going to cover some of the things that we're covering today because I think a lot of people take that position. Just because you gain notoriety or popularity based on something you may have said good one time, now all of a sudden that makes you this person that everybody should run to. Yeah, you know what I mean? And that's just a dangerous place to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's only one high priest. But I don't understand why people target Christianity for positions and status. Right. Anyway, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like EX Ministries. I say this before I you know, read the rest. But, you know, I've had people that want to be a part of EX Ministries or may have been a part of it, whatever. And they get lifted up in pride. And I'm like, how you get lifted up in pride <laughs> in EX Ministries? Right. Like all we talk against from yeah. the beginning, from the very start, yeah. was being lifted up. up and you know, yeah. it li lifting yourself up and trying to be something. And if the leader of the organization ain't doing that, right. how you gonna do? How it? you gonna do it? Right. Even here at ABC, people come and they want to be seen or they want a position. Or I'm like, 
Have you not heard? <laughs> have you not heard the messages? I mean, did you right. just drive by and see the sign? Right. I mean, why would you be here looking for that? And 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 I'm not doing that. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. that's that's what we teach against. But I've never understood that. Why are people doing this in Christianity? Like the the the, the religion of the meek and lowly man. Right. Why are you trying to be lifted up? Mm -hmm. And here's the thing that gets me. We all just repeating God's words and nothing we do hasn't already been done. Yes. <laughs> right? So how do you get lifted That's up crazy. in Christianity and all we're doing is repeating someone else's words? We're using the word of God. We're using the word that Paul spoke or God spoke through Paul. Yep. We're using the words God th spoke through Peter. So we can't even take credit for the words we speak. How you getting lifted up and you bootleg? Right. We all boot. Jay, you bootleg. Carmina, okay. you bootleg, bootleg even more. And then I'm bootleg. <laughs> Even more. Uh, and we're all bootleg. We, like, we don't have our own stuff. What we're saying now has been said cause a gazillion times. Yes. What we're reading has already been said. Yep. What we're doing has already been done. Mm -hmm. How do I get lifted up in pride and act like I have some? You know how they do get deep. Yep. See, oh, ooh, see, mm -hmm. see but, but, but see, if you get in the word, <laughs> then that puts you in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then if you go around it, you can then get under it. And you'd and you be like, dude, Jesus got to pull out a concordance. Now, wait a minute. Let me <laughs> see what this dude is. I mean, because that don't... Oh, man, it's hilarious. <laughs> Why are you getting deep and right. trying to look like something and none of this is ours? Yeah. It's all borrowed. Amen. And so we don't get lifted up in pride. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I tell men all the time, man, if you want some praise, like you saw on the banner in the back, that was from my wife. Amen. If you want some praise, take care of your home, man. Amen. Take care of your family. Let your kids give you that. Let your wife give you that. But don't come to the church and expect church folks who's supposed to be serving God to do that. Right. Uh, to do that for you. Right. That's not your place. First Corinthians 1 and 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? <laughs> we this, don't know nothing, Carmina. Right? Talk about it. Right. Now, unfortunately, this sounds way too familiar. <laughs> is this why so many seek fame instead of <clears throat> balance by sitting under the word and growing spiritually before they launch like their music ministry? <laughs> Let's talk about it, Carmina. Let's talk about it. So, I mean, this is where you get your Sunday's best, right? And all of these different talent shows that allow people to come on, come on, and and basically be lifted up in pride. Okay. So, what what they're doing is they're pick they're picking the leaders, um, or those that will lead church people with music instead of God's word. You understand what I'm saying? So, Second Peter two and three, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So the, the judgment is on these people for these actions anyway, but the, the reason why we, we need to pay attention to it is because it's a, it's a, a never-ending cycle that still is an issue to this day. So now it's, it's, we're at a point now where it's, it's looked upon as a normal thing in Christianity for people to be lifted up and placed on platforms before they're ready for that. And, and the reason why I lit up when you when you brought this up is because I've been there, right? And if it wasn't for Pastor G saying, hey, man, let me talk to you about something. Now, it took me to say, okay, in humility, you know what? This is a man with great wisdom. This is a man that has managed himself in the public eye for quite some time, right? Not a perfect man. That's not the, that's not the, that's not the, the conversation. The conversation is God still has him in a place because of how he carried himself, because he listened, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a, a, a never-ending cycle, it seems, of people who don't have that voice of reason or wisdom or counsel, right? That's a better way of putting it, counsel in their lives. And so we get this. So again, their damnation slumber if not. That's why we have so many of them falling, because they won't listen. They won't listen. Yeah. Right. And when you don't have that counsel, then that's when the pride can set in. Is that correct, Pastor? Yep. That's, okay. that's yeah. exactly when it sets in. Okay. And that's why God gives us people. You know, I tell people all the time, even Moses. Okay, so Moses was the deliverer of millions of people. Right. But, you know, he had to spend some time with Jesse. Yeah. 
And he had to do that to become a, uh, not Jesse. Jethro. Jethro. That's yeah. it. I said Jesse. Yeah, I knew Jethro. Right, right, right. You knew I was I talking. agree with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Hebrews would have got me on that one. Yeah. But uh, Jethro, <laughs> <laughs> Jethro, he had to spend some time with his father-in-law, Jethro, to learn how to be a man. Because in Egypt, he was spoiled. He, you know, he was just, everything he wanted, everything yeah. he needed was given to him. Because yeah. he was in the palace, you know, mm -hmm. right. uh, in the king's court. So uh, when God called him. He went and got under Jethro right. and he got to a place to where even after God called him, he went and got permission from Jethro to go and do what he God sure wanted. Yep. He respected him. He placed himself under some wise counsel because, dude, you got a lot of people to deliver and yeah. you got a lot of people depending on you. So you got to get this right. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So there were things about his makeup that were missing. And, you know, that's what's needed. That's why we see people. You know, people can easily just get on a talent show like Sunday's Best, and a year later, all the doors of the church are open to them. That's crazy. This person's background isn't checked. That's crazy. This person's motives aren't checked. This person won a contest. Yep. And you're going to open the doors of the church and allow them to come and so-called minister without any system of checks and balances. I mean, how easy is it for the devil today to get in church? You know, when we were younger... All the hell in church came through the music. Yeah. I mean, the mu it would be a nice, bright day in the church. A musician right. walk in, light bulbs just start <laughs> flickering off. <laughs> <laughs> he walk in with his Jerry curl. And I mean, you know, it just, you know, with his women's pumps and whatever he got on. And I mean, you know, just slanging, <laughs> slanging and everything. Just, you know, all of that. I mean, so we... You know, the music was always the area where the devil was. The choir was where the hellions were. You know, mm -hmm. everything, all of that, because, you know, the devil always wants his place back. I've yeah. said that in multiple videos, but mm -hmm. he wants his place back, the place he had in heaven. And so, you know, uh, he was lifted up in pride before he fell, just like this, because he wanted to be lifted up based on his talent and right. not on his position. You, right. you aren't the begotten son. Right. You're just the Banaha Elohim that makes music. Right. But he wanted to plan a coup to take over with that music mm. up in the face of God. Yeah. Isaiah 14 and 13 says, uh, for thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides. I don't know. No. Man, that sounds like a wow. midnight musical. That sounds like a... a <laughs> That's how, yeah. You know, because no, they're right. you, you, they're creating these grand opportunities, these grand platforms for people who are not ready, who have not set long enough, as you as you alluded to, um, Moses, uh, and set under the type of wisdom and counsel that you need to handle something like that. Mm -hmm. We have an example of that, particularly dealing with the Sunday's best with the young lady uh, that won the contest of like one of the first contests. Um, and then like a year later, she disappeared. Everybody wondered what was going on. And she became she came out as an alcohol, oh, alcoholic. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't think of her name. But yeah, uh, but there was several yeah, of them. Though. It, yeah, it's just it, but she wasn't the only one. It, it's a lot of them. And they they struggle to find, you know, help. Yeah, because they're being lifted when you're being lifted up because of your talent. It's yeah. hard to find true help right. because people want your talent. Right. So they want you to come and perform. You know, we ain't got time for you to be on the altar. We want you to pull the folks on the <laughs> exactly. altar. And so that's why the enemy pushes so hard to. And it's not just Sunday's best. It's just right. a lot of it's contests lot of yeah. going on, you know, in the church where we're trying to find the best. Well, God never wanted us to be the best. He just wants us to do our best. Right. Right. Well, we've got to take a quick break. We're going to talk more about faith and we encourage you share this video with those, you know, that may be dealing with this and needing to understand faith even better. So keep it right here. We've got more of the exposition. That means you have to do what you're able to do for people to respect you. They're not really living for him. They're not doing things his way. So because they're not doing things his way and they're doing things their own way, they have to find some kind of way to get blessed outside of the word because the word does not validate them. Christ, but you deny 
all of his rules, all of his regulations, and how he expects us to live. Can you live for him and not live like him? In LA, a group of men seeking money, flashy cars, even girlfriends, hardly seems out of the ordinary. But when those men are men of God, preachers, it's a little different. The cloth these holy men wear is strictly designer. One group of them will soon be opening up to the world about exactly how they balance living for God and those almighty in God we trust dollars. When the word validates us, when we can find ourselves in the word and be affirmed and validated in the spirit realm, this gives us validation as a kingdom citizen based on nothing else but what God has said. We must keep God's will first and deny ourselves to avoid an identity crisis. The mother of peace, Dr. Moon, is coming to the city of refuge. Now notice how interesting that is. The mother of peace is coming to the city of refuge. So you can't beat that combination. In the city hearing about peace and love, and the world is in such a disarray that God has raised up this mighty woman for no other reason than to bring us all together, all religions, all creeds, all races, so that we might learn to love one another. Why? Because we all are in the image of God. Doesn't matter what color, doesn't matter what shape of face, doesn't matter what creed, what religion. We just got some news from my little sister, Monica. She just told me that I won an award at BET for gospel song with Brand Silent and Gospel Album. I want to thank oh, BET, yeah. Connie, Jesse, all the people that worked on the album, Brand Silent, producers, writers. God is good. BET, we love you. Thank you. Hey! Praise God. You know God once said that let there be light. And the Bible says in the book of Revelation that the blood will be up to the horse's bridle because the blood of the sinners and no one's warning people. The Bible says your prophets were false because they did not warn you of the sin that leads you to calamity. Now you didn't believe that I said Jesus is Lord at the BT Wars? That's not enough, sir. The Bible says if you, if I say to the wicked, you shall surely die and you don't warn them, their blood is on your hands. And you got a lot of people at the BT Awards that have, you got a lot of blood on your hands, sir. You got a lot of blood on your hands. That's what I'm here to tell you. And how do you, you got a lot of blood on your hands. People? Like now, do you think that this is the right way to share with me? that I'm not doing what you believe is Jesus. You, you, you're you not listening in the churches. The Bible says know? wisdom cries aloud in the open streets. I need for you to give me a little bit some sanctified hips. <laughs> no, I'm serious. But I need for you to move. They're like, you ain't moved in a minute. <laughs> All right? Performance comes first. So we're back and we've got more questions. We're talking about faith. Now here's one thing. We tend to forget that faith and patience, those go <clears throat> hand in hand. So let's talk about that. Yeah, let, let's talk about mm -hmm. that. So, so faith is strengthened over time. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And I say that um, with, with a little bit of estimation because I've had to learn that in my young age. Right. Oh, yeah. Faith has to be tested, mm -hmm. has to be tried in order to be proven. And this takes time. That's, that's almost like a, a, a little problem that you have to solve. Right. So there's this tested this this time. And, and then there's patience all wrapped into that, that whole little algorithm, so to speak. <laughs> so James 1 and 3 says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. This, this is something I think, especially dealing with now, when you're dealing with the millennial uh, mindset, the millennial mindset, mm -hmm. everything is, you know, it's at your fingertips, especially with the Internet. Everybody want to just go, go, get, get, get. The moment you get a little bit of something. Um, you feel like it has to be spread or shared, so to speak. You know what I mean? So, you know, over time, we have to slow down a little bit. Slow down a little bit. Yeah, and um, the, the Internet has, has brought in a, uh, I guess, made it easy for people to try to become something. Right, right. right. And because people, you know, don't listen to the word, don't want to sit through, they think church is archaic, they think the idea of learning and reading the Bible and all these things – you know, that just that just seems like something an old person would do. Right. The young person, I'm just going to, you know, go on YouTube. I'm going to go on the Internet. I'm going to go on social media and find, you know, find someone. And most of the people there that you're finding are novices. Uh, and it's very dangerous to follow a novice. 
Mm -hmm. um, and this is where the whole uh, patience and faith thing comes in because <clears throat> uh, 1 Timothy 3 and 6 says that uh, when it's talking about the qualifications of a, uh, an elder, it says, not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Yeah. And so when you're lifted up in pride with what you want to do, mm -hmm. instead of, you know, the patience it takes to prepare yourself for it, then you're going to fall quickly. I mean, if Jesus waited till he was 30 years old to start his ministry, Amen. Talk somebody. about it. Come on. So what? I mean, Talk you, about you, it. You, you need to wait, brother. Mm -hmm. But when in situations like that where they want it that quickly, don't they often make a lot of ungood decisions to get it that quickly? Yeah. They yeah. Got, they got I mean, some stuff. I, they got to do some stuff. <laughs> so, and, and I know I'm referring to myself, but because this is a topic that, um, I, you know, it's my, it's my testimony mm -hmm. because I was raised in the church. I have a family full of people who do music, who are very skilled at it. Um, I have a family full of people who've served in ministry. Um, and to an extent, I was groomed for it. And there's a period of time where I had to set aside, set, a, set myself aside in my own right as an adult and say, am I called to do this or am I doing this because I've seen it my whole life? Mm -hmm. And when I started asking God for the truth, for the true purpose of my life pertaining to ministry, mm -hmm. Then he started leading me places that I hadn't fathomed in a million years that I, that I would be or go. So that was my answer. But then even, even up to that point, there were things that led up to it that answered more questions that I had that I could refer back to, again, that God was revealing to me. But even in that, mm -hmm. it's still been a, a, a ride of faith and patience. And I've had zeal moments. I've had those zealous moments where I've gone to pastor. I got this idea. Yes, you have. I want to do this. Yes, I want to do this. Touch and he would just say, you know, slow down, uh, man. You, you don't know what you're doing yet. Just like that. Not to sugarcoat it, but you, sometimes you have to speak to it just that, that direct. So I think a lot of what, we, what we're pointing out is a lot of people, just, they're just missing that wise counsel in their life to prevent them from moving too fast in certain situations. One of the things that, that have been told to me that I hold near and dear is, God won't forget about you. If it's something that God has designed you for or something that God is calling you to or on the assignment that he has you for, why do we feel like we got to race to the finish line? We're talking about somebody. We're talking about God, the creator who doesn't operate in our time frame. Mm -hmm. So he are, he's already saying it. But if, if, if I'm not going to take the steps that he's ordering and try to circumvent, so to speak, the YouTube route, social media route, or just the route of, OK, there's a pretty, uh, you know, adventurous or ambitious person. I can just follow that person's lead. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you, you'll mess around and you'll miss what God truly has for you, what he has for you to do. So um, just speaking to that. Yeah. And a lot of times the church who's supposed to be, you know, uh, putting up the boundaries and, you know, uh, helping you mature into that. They're the ones pushing folks. Right. You know, they, they push Crazy. people. I mean, yes, as soon do. as you become a viable asset to the church as a man, as soon as you kind of season yourself and, and you could really be over the brotherhood, a mm -hmm. great brotherhood leader, right. you read the pastor. Mm -hmm. and, and because you see in the pastor getting his hat combed while he's preaching. Yeah. <laughs> Why he's preaching? I, 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 something. <laughs> somebody <laughs> put, I, now, this is a true story. Somebody put Carmex on his finger because his lips is chapped while he's oh, preaching. You wow. sitting up and watching, you know, the Caesar pastor of the church. So, I mean, you, you want some of that wow, too. So right. as soon as folks start thinking you able to do something, you're ready to go start a church. And you could have really blessed the church. Right. You could have really worked in a church with a pastor, right. you know, as a leader of, of something of some sort. You weren't necessarily called to take on the whole thing, right. but because right. that's what people pushed you to do, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, that's, that's unfortunate. So we have to make sure that we're able to put the brakes on some of this stuff because your faith you know, you're only going to go as far as your faith can handle. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Like Your faith, if your faith can't handle that, right. you know, I, I know we talk about mustard seed faith and all this, but you'll be put in situations that you're not equipped to handle. Yeah. Exactly. You know, about like, the, like, like the other dude, uh, or one of the dudes on the, on the video call, had to call his pastor. He's 50 years old, had to call his pastor <laughs> for some backup. <laughs> 
Dude, you 50, you, and you 50 got to call old. somebody, and you in a, a, because you getting roasted. Oh, my goodness. By a young man? Yep. That's what I'm saying. Yep. You, you aren't ready for the platform. You aren't ready for where you are. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says when you're lifted up like that, you're definitely going to fall. Right. So what about the situations when our faith gets weak? You know, we recognize, okay, my faith is weak. How do we strengthen it? What can I do to get back on track? Church. <laughs> I, I don't know why we're in this time where, like, folks, they try to downplay they don't the need church. for church or the need for fellowship. Again, personal testimony. We all go through ups and downs. We all go through things. But if you've got brothers and, and for, for the young ladies or the women, you have older women seasoned in the faith that can just teach you and strengthen you and pray you through and just give you words of encouragement. This is provided by people who you know that labor among you. Like, we're going to get more into this, but it's the church. Um, that, that we need to depend on to, to build our faith when we're weak. So when we hear the word and, and then we see it exemplified. So mm -hmm. where, where one person may be weekend in one moment, another person may be getting wh whatever comes along with that strength and purpose in their life or per, uh, spot in their life. You get to gleam off of that. So God can do it for you, Carmina. God can do it for Pastor G. He can do it for me pertaining to this of, of the subject that we're talking about. Right. But see, well, I got to cut you off because, you know, somebody's looking and they're thinking, but why do I have to go to church? Why do I have to hear the word there at church? Can't I just go on YouTube and get my word? <laughs> well, let, let's support let's support the church uh, part first, right? Okay. Romans ten and seventeen. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay. So as as it is exemplified in the Bible, that's where you go to hear the word of God. Okay. You you meet you fellowship, right? Back then again, it was the synagogue, then it went to right. Yeah, there is YouTube. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Why can't they just watch it on YouTube? YouTube is not in the Bible. Oh. <laughs> When I picked up the Bible, it doesn't say as thou as me of weekly in the YouTube. <laughs> it's not in the Bible. Yeah. YouTube is secondary, third or fourth. Okay. It, it can be used as a helping tool, yeah. but not the primary tool. And that's not opinion. This is what God mandated for, uh, for his children to be fed, groomed, and patience and, and to work your, yourself and, strength, and strengthen your faith. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bible also says, know those that labor among you. Folks, right. you Googling on YouTube, you don't know. Right. Right? Then it also says, for fake, not, forsake not to fellowship one to another. Right. And so those folks that on you, you can't fellowship with one another on YouTube. Right, right. You I care? I don't care how many chats is going on on the side and folks right. blowing kisses and everything. You know the, yeah. the, the, the little <laughs> sentences? Yeah, yeah. And it make people look crazy when they preaching. Oh, yeah, yeah. How you, how you doing, Sandra? And see, God says, well, oh, 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 John, John, I see you. And the Lord said that we are to, uh-huh, will it, will it, not, what? Right. <laughs> you like, what in the world? That's, that's schizo fellowship. That's schizophrenia. That's not fellowship. <laughs> but you know what they do now, right? So, like, you're on there, right, and I'm on the side, logged in, too, and then somebody's being disrespectful or cussing or just doing something crazy. Oh, oh yeah, then you stop and tell me, hey, block that person right there. How in the world does that work? I yeah, how does that work? Well, they need to meet. Look, come try to do that on Sunday. Right. Yeah, yeah. Get, get disrespectful in here with all this heat. Ah. But, uh, <laughs> but this is why so many pastors are falling and people are speaking so ill of the church. The church is the boot camp for faith. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so this is where we learn our, our, uh, how, to, how, to have or how to have a faith experience right. in the church. Mm -hmm. Now, you can get saved on the street. You can get saved in a car. You can ask for forgiveness yes. here. You can do all of that. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of the church is faith comes by hearing, mm -hmm. hearing the word of God that is being preached. And the other part of it is it's exemplified, like you said. Right. So you get to see lives in action. Right. You actually get to see the application of it. And this is... Uh, why the enemy is attacking the church. Jesus insinuated that hell was coming for the foundation of the church. Why? Because if the devil knows your faith can be built up here, he wants to alienate you yep. from it. He yep. wants to remove you from where you can see a good example. Yep. Most people now are from broken homes. They see tore up homes. They see divorces. They don't even see a, a good situation growing up. Mm -hmm. Then they go to school and all the peer pressure and all the different things that's mm -hmm. going on there. Then mm -hmm. they go on their job and everybody's trifling mm -hmm. or whatever. Dude mm -hmm. trying to preach the Hebrew Israelite, mm -hmm. Israelite doc doctrine while you trying to cut the grass. You trying to turn the lawnmower up louder so you can't hear him. <laughs> he over there trying to preach the doctrine. Man, can, can we cut this grass that they called us to do? Right. But so in every walk of life, your faith is being tested and tried and the enemy wants you in all of those environments 
rather than have you in an environment where iron can sharpen iron. Exactly. You can be strengthened. You can be admonished. You can be helped by the fellowship, by the examples, by the word being taught. Right. Matthew 16 and 18 says, uh, Jesus said, I, I say also unto thee, thou art Peter upon this rock. I will build my church. Then this is where he qualifies what I said. He says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail Bell against it. Now, right. why is he worried about the gates of hell? Mm -hmm. Why is he even speaking about the gates of hell at this point? Because he understands hell is coming for the church right. because this is what we need to make it, especially in 2019. He said, forsake not the fellowship, even as that day approaches. approaches. That Talk means the closer we get to the end, the more we're going to need each other. Yeah. See, you're preaching. It seems like the attack on the church is mainly from people that they feel like prayer and faith just doesn't work. Right now, well, maybe for them they tried it and it failed. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about it. <laughs> well, again, you know, the word of truth needs to be taught and rightly divided, right? And, and this is why we talk about the U YouTube aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So when I say a church, I didn't mean just like any church or or, but a church where the word is taught correctly. Right. And again, church is not YouTube. It's not the it's not the internet. The the right way to pray, the right way to believe, the right way to behave. We got to talk about behavior, okay? So that our faith would not be hindered. Second Timothy two fifteen. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. A workman that needeth not to be to behavior, not be ashamed. Behavior. So what you're doing is you're you're saying one thing, but your actions are totally different or opposing to what you're actually saying. And that's predominantly all of the musical artists that represent Christ or it, or Christ's church. The, the, the actions are not lining up with what they're singing or professing in the lyrics. So it's almost we talked about that. They're making merchandise. They, they're using it as a product to sell. But nobody's been held to the standard or or have the standard of accountability for what their lives actually mean or what their if their lives going to model what they're talking about. Yeah, but so, the, the preachers are wilding them too, though. Yeah. I mean, it ain't even just the singers. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're right. Dietrich you're right. Haddon just did a movie playing a bisexual pastor. And I mean, he was the creepiest was thing. He, was he playing? I mean, he was acting. Oh. Well, he got paid. Hey. And so he was he was on the <laughs> on the show just showing himself wilding out, cussing, feeling up the women. I mean, you can't act that. That ain't no act if your hand really did it. Hey. <laughs> so let me ask you this, though, before you go further. So our behavior can hinder our faith. Is that what you're saying? Carmina, your behavior is your faith. OK. And that's what that's the issue. Yep. That's I mean, that's everything. Mm -hmm. You behave the way you believe. Yeah. Right. How can a person not do this? I mean, doesn't this happen at like at work? I've, I've, I've talked to countless brothers or people in the faith. Right. That you at work and people go. You're a Christian, ain't you? Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. But how did that person come to that understanding or come to the to the point of asking you that question? Behavior. Your behavior. Your behavior. Your behavior. Yeah. So your faith and your behavior are the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's how I know that you are who you say you are. Right. Right. That's that, that's how I know it. You can't believe on him, believe in him, and disregard his way of doing things. Right. I mean, if we believe in him and he's in us, then we have to do things his way. Right. Amen. So how do people just spray Christ on like cologne and get up and, <laughs> and get an award and then just mention him like just I just put it right here. Oh, we want to thank God who's the head of my life. Wow. How, how do you just do that? Like, wow. is he really the head? Did he tell you to be there? Wow. Did he tell you to record that music? Wow. Did he tell you to get grills? <laughs> did he tell? I mean, did he tell you to tattoo your face? Right. I mean, are we talking about you? You know what I'm saying? That's, yeah, right, it's right. not. That's not faith, man. That's it's you not, just mentioning something. Not, right. And like I said earlier in this in this show, it's crazy, man. If you was a, a, a nation, if you were a part of Islam, Buddhism, or something, yeah. then man, Buddha would have laid his belly on you and smothered you. You can you can't get away with that, right, brother? Right. If you're gonna be Buddhist, you gotta do the Gandhi. You gotta do that. You gotta That's do not it. optional. It's not. That's optional. what you do. You're chanting to summon those spirits. Yeah. Right. Yes, you are. If, you, yeah. if, you, if you're a part of Cali and all that, you gotta slap at all them arms. I don't know, but you have to do what them <laughs> what? folks. I don't know. I don't know where that came from. But you have to do all of these different religions, including, you know, Islam and different things. You can't you can't fake with it. 
Yeah, you can't. You can't have a bomb strapped to you and just right. fake like I'm going to really let it off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, <laughs> wow. That is gonna definitely have to be taken out of this. But not <laughs> but it, it just can't happen. Matthew 6 and 24 says, No man can serve two masters. He's either gonna hate one, love the other, love the other, hate one, he's gonna hold to one, despise the other. You cannot serve God and opportunity. You can't serve God and money. So when you take the money, when you take the opportunity, you mm. tell God, no, right. I can't serve you. Right. So you can't get up after you've get, taken the money, taken the mammon, and then try to spray Christ on it like, oh, Jesus is still with me. I hope he walks with Jesus. Walks. Wow, right. I mean, you, that's not going to work. That's not. And that's what I'm saying. That's not faith. If right. we're really talking about faith, we're talking about behavior. Yep. Is that what we're talking about? We're talking about, we're behavior. talking about behavior. Not to say that we're perfect. Right. Everybody's right. struggling with stuff. Everybody's dealing with stuff. But right. man, I'm not, I'm, I'm not about to exonerate your sin. Right. I'm not about to give you a hall pass right. for, for, for the weekend or for, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, give you 100%. a pass to get this award. Give you right. a pass to cut this album, right. cut this deal, all that. No, no, you can't do that. If it's faith that we're talking about, then it's behavior. We are trying our best. I preach the standard of the word even when I don't live up to it, yeah. even when I struggle to live up to it. Yeah. I ain't changing the word. Right. The word is the word. Right. Amen. Well, it sounds like some folks just need to do one of those good look in the mirrors yeah. and take a self-evaluation to make sure they are really believing the right thing. Right, right. Mm -hmm. well, well, let me ask you this. So, Carmina, if, if you're saved, mm -hmm. right, what are you saved from? Right? right? And I think that's the question that we need to ask ourselves or that's what the, the general question that needs to be state, stated. What are you saved from if you are saved? So, how can your life be about what you want it to be if you've given up everything to follow Christ. So how do you go and you sit in a meeting and the entire time that the Rick label heads and everybody's telling you what they're going to do, how they're going to put you there and do all of the things that they're promising you. The Holy Spirit the whole time is telling you, don't sign it. Don't do it. This is not the way I want you to go. Go back home. Go back home. You still sign the record deal. You go all around the world. You get all these accolades. So you've ignored God all of this time, all the way up to the point. And then God gives you a reward. In front of everybody. <laughs> so you get rewarded in front of everybody that you disobey God in front of. Does that sound like that would be God? That doesn't make any sense. So if you are in the faith, then his way would have to be in you. That means that in that meeting, you would have to say no. Didn't you say no? I said, I said no. I had to call you first. I almost didn't say no. <laughs> hey, Pastor. <laughs> so about this record deal stuff, uh, what you thinking? Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, my kid is hungry. So, uh, <laughs> right. What you think? <laughs> Matthew 16 and 24 said, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him do what? Deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. There have been instances where I've wanted to make a decision based on what I felt or what I was after the entire time. And I had to seek God or God led me to seek wise counsel. In both situations, God told me to make a decision based on what, what he was telling me to do, and I chose God, which is how I end up to where, where I am now versus being talked about on the exposition. <laughs> but my point is, um, you know, you, you, you have to deny yourself. We have to learn how to deny ourselves. Yeah. And like you said in the beginning, the good old fashioned looking in the mirror like Michael Jackson taught. Uh, the Bible tells us to examine ourselves to even see if we're in the faith. Yes, so it did. that's our job to look in the mirror, the right. man in the mirror. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this means that many can feel that they are Christian, but really do not have faith in Christ. Man. Ain't that it, messed it, up? Yeah, that's, that's You know, the, 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 the whole ordeal with the bullhorn on the street and, 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 and Kurt getting called out by the guy. Yep. Doc, I mean, when I saw that, I was like, okay. And then I went and prayed. Because I don't ever want to walk out of somewhere and somebody's out there and that's the only way God can wow. can, can speak to me. Like wow. I've gone so far on my own, doing my own thing, and that's how I have to hear it. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, I, you can speak to me without a bullhorn. I need to hear you now, Amen. Jesus. Yeah, because, you know, uh, you can't do what you feel uh, as a Christian um, and and and. Have faith in Christ. Right. Our, our faith in Christ 
comes from our behavior lining up with what he says. Right. And if you do not believe enough to change and model him, then you don't really believe. Talk about it. Second Corinthians 13 and 5. Examine. What's the first word? Examine, Examine yourselves. Now, why would Paul have to tell a church who was arrogant about their faith? <laughs> These folks, the Corinthians, thought they were the stuff. They did. You know, they had come out of the false god worship. They, mm -hmm. I mean, they're like, hey, we've totally separated from that. We're we, 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 we the real deal. Right. And then Paul is writing them and saying, and this is second Corinthians. So this is after the first letter. Yeah. He said, examine <laughs> yourselves after y'all all puffed up and think y'all the bomb. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Amen. Check yourself to see if you saved. That's what Paul said. Yeah. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? Mm -hmm. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. And that's somebody that thinks they're one way and they're really not. So there are people that think they're saved, but at God's judgment throne, they'll be turned away because they really were not saved? Well, the Bible says that this will happen, right? Mm -hmm. I know our seeker-friendly society makes it seem like that's like unlikely, like God is just this loving, passive God that just, you know, don't do that now. Come over here. This is my Bible. I do what it says. We, I understand that that's the way we would like for the, our, uh, a God to be, but not the true God, right? The Bible says this will occur. Matthew 7 and 21 says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. And, and every time I read this scripture, I get convicted and I pray. I don't want this to be said to me. Shall Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So not everyone that says this to God, Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But. He that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. So again, that faith matching the works. He's not looking for you just to say with your words. And the Bible says that they, they going they going the lips is going to say it, but their hearts are what? Far from, Far from, from them. Mm -hmm. So at some point it's about, again, the platform is about the accolades or it's about the prestige or it's about the popularity or it's about the power to control. It's about everything except for what God created these things for. If you're in a position to be any type of influence over anybody, that's from one person, right? From your home on out to whoever's in the world, that's something that needs to be taken very, very seriously. And you need to meditate on the scripture 100%. Yeah. And, you know, our secret friendly society. We should meditate. Yeah. Not you, we, all of us. I'm sorry. Our, our secret friendly society paints a picture of God. So we start thinking God wouldn't do it because we wouldn't, wouldn't do it right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because we're basing it on all the stuff we do. Right. But we got to understand, God don't sin. Talk about so it. So there's no sin in God. He don't live like us. Mm -hmm. So his compassion is different than ours. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Right. Because his vantage point and his disposition is totally different. Yep. So you worried about how you felt when you got busted. Yeah. So you ain't going to bust nobody. Yeah. Well, God has never been busted. Talk about it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so we can't paint the picture of God like he's human. That's what the Moonies did. You know, Sung Young Moon and mm. them folks that Bishop Noel Jones has just brought into his church. The Moonies from back in the day. Wow. The, they do that. You know, I just thought I'd just put that right yeah, yeah, there. Just you know, it, it, it needs to be. Yeah. But understand something, and I'm going to bring this to a close. None of this, none of this uh, Matthew 7 and 21 where the people won't be able to enter in. And the question you just asked, mm. would God really stop people from entering in that think they should enter in. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some hellions that don't believe in them. There are some folks that despise them. They cussing them out. They cussing me out. The Hebrew is like them the angriest folks in the whole world. And they just cuss me out every day. I mean, <laughs> just mad. They mad when they wake up in the morning. Just how you brush your teeth with a frown. With yeah. a frown. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, just bleeding. <laughs> just, just mad. They, 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 they just getting just... I mean, the angriest folks ever. Man, I'm so glad I'm not in that religion because, man, you, Lord. them some miserable, miserable Thank folks. You, Lord. But understand something. None of this that we're talking about, mm -hmm. the judgment of God and the wrath of God, it's not going to happen without warning. Right. That's the thing. That's the deal here. We're looking at the end and how horrible it will be for them, wow. but fail to account for the countless warnings God has given them prior to their end. All right. Did you get warnings? I, I've gotten plenty of them. You get warnings, them. Carmina? I get warnings. Just like the instance of the street pre preacher rebuking Kurt Franklin. And I recently had a similar encounter with Fred Hammond and have confronted many others in the industry. These guys are being warned. 
People everywhere are being warned. At the beginning of this year, God showed me that this was the year of correction and that these people would be openly rebuked and admonished before everyone as proof that he loves them enough to call them to repentance. Hmm. What did I do? I warned everyone via social media and the true church perspective that it would happen this year. Remember that? I do remember. Yes, sir. I said the line would be drawn and those that claim Christianity uh, and those that claim Christianity but promote carnality will be corrected. I said that. Yes, you did. It's because we cannot claim the faith and not have faith in the process that faith requires. Right. We can't spend our lives seeking our own will and our own desires and claim faith in a God that requires us to deny them. What we want to do is based on our deficits and issues. But God bases what we should do on his original creation plan for us before we were tainted by the sin of this world. Faith in Christ requires action. We must try our best to live according to it and forsake our own way. We must deny ourselves and live according to his plan and not the plan that we created to feel better about our deficits. Jesus is the answer. And in order to give these answers to others, we must first believe that they are applicable to us. That's how Christianity works. As believers in the faith, we must have faith. And more importantly, we must prove that we are in the faith by our actions and decision making. Matthew 7 and 22 says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in their name, I mean, in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. 